Right, so we want to get Scratch, or the Scratch Cat, moving based on key input because we actually want to make something that's more interactive rather than just watching animations. So probably one of the cool, easiest, most simplest ways to get something moving is when space key pressed and we want to change that to right arrow. Well, what else do we want to tell this cat to do? Well, so when the right arrow key pressed, we probably want it to move, but we obviously want it to move to the right rather than just any old way. So first of all, we'll say point direction, and in the drop down option, you can see that 90 is right, which isn't handy, and then we can tell it to move. And if we test this now, see, it's all refreshed, and we press right, there you go. And even with looks, I can say next costume. And we're just dragging back, so we've got a bit more run. There you go. So that's a that's just kind of a rough move. Um, if we duplicate that and then say left arrow, left, the move is fine because he's pointed left now, so that's fine. Now we get this interesting it, uh, glitch. This is because of how the sprite image rotates. Um, so if it rotates, when you say turn, it'll actually turn. We here this one says flip, so that way when we do it. We'll get it to flip horizontally. So, this is going to do more, and I'm just going to rename this cat just because if I had to refer to it, it makes a little bit more sense to call it that. Um, so, we've got movement here. Now, this movement isn't the smoothest because there's a bit of a delay there, and so I'd probably like to do that a little bit better if I could. So, could we do the code in a way that makes a bit more sense? So I'll disconnect this stuff so it doesn't run. I'll throw that in the bin. Um, so if I said, when green flag clicked forever, if sensing key is pressed, right arrow duplicates, and I'll do it for the left arrow, of course. And negative was left, positive was right. Now if we use this code, and I press green arrow flag. This code's forever looping, and it's basically saying, "Oh, has he pressed it? Has he pressed it? Has he pressed it?" And so when I do, it's instant, and it's constantly checking really, really fast, and wanting to know if I've pressed this. And this is this is quite a, a good way to code. The only problem is that the code is basically working a bit to do the, to do this because it's constantly saying. Are we there yet? So to give you an idea, if I go data, make a variable. And a variable is basically just a random word that we can assign a value. So I could call that word health, or I could call it points or score or what have you. And I would have to set a behavior that would behave, behave like that rather than say, as soon as I call it health, um, it would behave like health. It won't. I have to do the code about it. So that, I want to call it... Uh, we the yet is the variable, right? And so I'll set it to it says set to zero when the game starts, and then I'll say change by one. Hold on, I'll just stop this. I'll change by one. I uh, missed. Um, if I press the right arrow key, so this is to show you whenever I press the right arrow key how much it loops. So I press. I go press the right arrow key. You can see it counting up there. See you look. See. But if I was to stop this code and take that part out and just put it in the forever loop, so whenever I wasn't pressing either, any of the keys and it was just looping in this forever checking for me to press, it gives you an idea of how much the code's working. There you go. You can see the numbers ticking up pretty rapidly. So I think we're in a million. Um, so what you can find is when you code it like this all the time, with all these different forever loops going all the time, it can make the code run a little bit slow. Um, so I'll show you another way to get around that. Um, which is, uh, back to the events, when right arrow key pressed, repeat, so keep looping until something happens. So I want to keep repeat. So basically, when I want to press the right arrow key, I want to keep moving, but I want to keep repeating this until I take my finger off the key. So as soon as I press it, it loops, and then when I take my finger off, it stops looping. And so the code basically only activates when pressed. Um, so if I go to the operators, and there's an option called not. So when right arrow key, not pressed, do that. When 
lift arrow key lift arrow key take that get rid of that right okay um and then we've got this so then I can say left right does the same thing now some of you guys are wanting to or wanting to know about jumping now jumping is not as straightforward as you would think so uh, we're not going to get towards that um, but the next one will be getting it to shoot